So. <laughs> hands up in the front row. <laughs> hands up right here. Me, Professor, call me. Come on, right here. Yes. Right, thank you. Should we take notes? If you want to. Will this be on the test? Yes. <laughs> okay. Depending how how you learn. I really need to seek this information in. Yes, sir. Can I get the clip notes? <laughs> okay, you ready? Yes, sir. All right, so today we're going to go over training and programming. Okay. Many things that happen behind the doors that the clients don't know about, and it's all kind of like you have to program it based on how long you have that client for and or their goals and things like that. So different things to consider. As you can see here, I have a list and array of things that we're going to go through between reps, sets, rest, muscles, mode, style, cycle periodization, final and accent. Okay, and I'll go through each of these so that way you can understand um, what, what we're doing. So as far as programming, or the reps, we'll start with the reps. You can go anywhere from one to five, then you'll go from six to 12, and then anything, uh, what is it, 13 plus in, in reps is uh, 13 plus, and that can go as high as whatever number you're doing, 25, uh, 25 through 100, whatever the case may be based on the reps that you're doing, okay? Each one has a specific purpose as far as what it's gonna do for the client. So as far as reps, anywhere from one through five, that will be strength. Anytime you're doing any rep range between six and 12, you're gonna work on size. And anytime you're going anything over 13 to 100 reps or whatever the case is, you're gonna go for leaning out, okay? Leaning out, toning, um, anything like that. So what happens with the strength is that typically you're gonna go heavier in weight. So lots heavier in weight. Um, because of that, you can only do from one to five reps. You're, bit, you're building the strength and the muscle fibers. The tensile strength is what you're gonna build and that's gonna allow you to do heavier and heavier weights. You can only put so much on your joint and your muscles at the time though. So it's gonna to have to be not something that you're always gonna do all the time. Anytime you want to increase the size, actually see change in, in the muscles growing, you're going to do anywhere from 6 to 12 reps for all of your the, the weights that you're doing. So you're going to make sure that the weights that you do choose allow you to hit, whether it's 8 or 10 or 12, whatever it is that you're setting, that you can just about hit that. If you feel that you can do 5, 10 more, you've gone too light, you need to adjust the weight. So for each one of these that you do, you need to adjust the weight so that you can hit that goal. Okay? You can't go over it, and you, you don't want to go under it. So don't go too heavy, don't go too light, it's gotta be just about right. You do anywhere from three, four, five sets or so, and each time you get a little bit better at gauging what, what weight you're gonna to be to, to hit that. This is gonna change your size of your muscle. You're gonna see a change in you getting bigger. Leaning out phase means your muscles are gonna get a little bit leaner, smaller. Um, you, you'll shrink a little bit more depending on how often you do this, okay? So it's not super heavy, but it's not too light uh, based on whatever it is that um, whatever it is your client's goals are. Sets. Sets here, anywhere from two to three, and then we'll go from four to six, and then anywhere from seven plus, seven plus sets. Um, it's all gonna depend on what you wanna do per, um, if you have a specific goal, if you're trying to see a certain change in a certain body part, you're likely gonna do more sets of that. Um, but normally it's gonna be two to three or anywhere from four to six sets per exercise. Um, depending on how many reps and what you're gonna do here, it's gonna coincide with these as well. Um, typically for like bodybuilders per se, you're gonna see um, 20 plus sets total in a workout. For the, for the bodybuilders, 20 plus sets total in a workout for, for each muscle group per se. So keeping that in mind clearly for somebody that just wants general fitness, it's not gonna be all the way up there. Um, I personally like to make sure that clients get at least 10 exercises in a workout, 50 minute session, and or 15 sets total, and you can determine how you wanna count the sets. Um, so 
Um, typically, like I said, three to four sets is what you would normally see. That's what you kind of go with, depending on how much time you have and what you're trying to work. As far as rest goes, it's going to coincide with your, your rep range. If you're trying to do strength building, your rest is going to be anywhere from three to five minutes between. If you're going to go for sides, if it's anywhere from 60 to 120 seconds. And then for your leaning out, it's going to be anywhere from 10 to 60 seconds as far as rest. So strength training, because you're doing heavier weight, lots of strain on the muscle tissue, you're going to want a longer rest period so your body can recoup, get the energy back so that when you can do that weight again. Okay. When you're doing size, you want to rest between 60 to 120 seconds in between exercises. And then you have the leaning out phase, 10 to 60 seconds. Um, that's going to help you to increase the, to just get about enough energy to pump it out again, but not too much. So it's going to really lean you out here, kind of going towards endurance training. Okay. So with the rest, you actually, with the rest, you're actually going to have to consider your setup time and your transition time. Okay. That's what I had here is the setup and transition time. Setup and transition time is going to eat into your rest time. So sometimes you might need to get enough rest, but the rest is going to be relative to rest in between exercises and or actually you being actively doing something. Because setting up is kind of still part of the workout. You are going to, you, know, you, you haven't fully rested to catch your breath, but you got to consider all aspects of that and setting up and prepping for your workout program as to, you don't want to go too over because even if you consider your 60 or 120 second rest, but then you take a minute or two to set up and then after that you need another rest, you're, you're pushing it towards four minutes, which should be now heavier lifting, and then your weight ranges are off. So make sure that you adjust accordingly for that. Okay. Muscle groups. Okay, so keep in mind that these <coughs> do coincide here. You got this one here with here. Mm -hmm. This one is with the size, and the short rest is for the leaning out okay each one hits the muscle fibers a little bit differently this one is um it, it's strength doesn't change size doesn't make it small doesn't make it big it just makes it stronger so a little thicker bundle uh, to hold more more weight this one will change the muscle side fiber you'll see a big change in size and this one will just kind of like lean it out burn it shrink it a little bit um so you can see a little bit more defined so as far as muscles, you got to consider that there, there are different aspects to muscles, you know, like working out legs, all different things that I consider between your quads, your hamstrings, your calf, your, your, your ab and adductors, um, you know, ankle, ankle strain, range of motion, you got your shins. So there's different aspects to legs that you need to consider when you're working out legs. Outside from that, there's a primal mover, there's an accent. There's the um, the protagonist, the antagonist, uh, stabilizer muscles, weak areas, um, ligaments, tendons, you know, lots of different factors to consider. It's not just the muscle, it's not just working your, your thighs, your quads. It's going to be a couple of different factors where the single leg movements come in, the balance, the agility. It's all kind of strengthening the entire aspect of everything related to the legs to getting that work in. And so you have to make sure you're including that in all of your workouts so that way the client sees good result, not just in all quads, they've got strong quads, but they've got weak hamstrings, something's gonna pull, they're gonna strain. They might be sitting all day, uh, you know, at a desk in a chair, and then they wanna go, you know, take their dog off for a walk, do a sprint, and next thing you know, they got a hamstring pull, and as an example. And so you gotta make sure you're always training to be able to tackle all aspects, so that way they're a little bit fitter when they're out in the open. Key to most people's workouts is they wanna be pretty much fit to do whatever they need to do in their daily life, whether it's work, playing with the kids, you know, hanging with friends, doing those sports activities, anything they want to just be ready for the unexpected. So you have to consider that in the training. It's not always basic movements. Think of all this, the stabilizers and the helper muscles, okay? Uh, mode. Mode is just the different types. They got bands. Um, they got the, uh, the barbells, they got the dumbbells, they got the kettlebells, they got the TRX, they, they got the selectorized equipment, you know, they got so many different things out there. And so the mode for you is just gonna be 
you know, how are you making the client feel the workout for that muscle? Each one is gonna tackle it a little bit differently. Kettlebells kind of incorporate a lot more forearms. The barbells and the dumbbells, um, you're allowed to use more weight. The bands give you a constant tension, pull up and down. You got the chains that it's um, lighter at the bottom, heavier as you go up and you lift the chains up off the floor. Um, TRX is your own body weight. So each one is gonna tackle the muscle a little bit differently. And the more ways you can tackle the muscle from different angles, the better change you're gonna see in the body. Your body's gonna wanna adapt to these things. And your body's very smart, so if you do the same old thing all the time, your body's going to your body's going to get used to it. And your body, your body's smart. Your body's going to preflex to that, depending on what you always do. So if you always do bicep curls at a certain time every single week, your body's going to learn that around this time, prepare for this contraction. So it's not really something that's it's going to shock to do. It's just going to automatically get ready for the flex. And you always want to shock your body, so definitely don't let your body know what's coming. Okay. That's where the program is gonna come in to keep switching it up, to keep shocking the body, and then still using all these things in it to get you the result that you want. Style, so different styles. There's um, between modes, modes would be more so the, the time that it takes you to lift, whether it's um, up or down of the exercise, um, the ascension, the descension of you know pressing to lowering it, Okay, does it take you three seconds lower? Does it take you five seconds lower? Are you gonna explode up and then go down slow? Or are you gonna take five seconds down, five seconds up? So that's different ways to change the style in the workout. As well as you're doing, per se, like a Tabata type session where you're doing 20 seconds of work and then 10 seconds of rest and repeating that for eight rounds. Each one is gonna shock your body a little differently. Are you doing, um, are you doing supersets? Are you doing tri-sets? Are you doing a pyramid? Okay. Um, are you doing negatives? Are you doing a partner assist? So all these things are going to shock your body in different styles to just modify your training. And there's about 20 different ways that you can switch it up. Um, rest, pause, you know, the list can go on for how you can do all of these. So making sure that you kind of incorporate all these different things into your workout program to yet again, keep the muscles shocked. So these are all going on behind closed doors as you're doing your programming to set this up in a way to kind of like um, slowly drip it into the workout sessions from week to week. Um, some of the easier ones up front, working the harder, and or start with some of the harder ones modified to kind of get them prepped for that. And then as the weeks come on, then you make it more towards what it's supposed to be um, harder in the future. So keeping that in mind, all those things. The more you learn, the more you're able to, you know, have more fun with your programming. Cycle and periodization is just going to be the the aspect of taking some of these things here between um, the strength, the size, and the leaning out phase and putting it into a workout program for a client uh, based on their goals. So there's gonna be um, certain aspects of whether it's two months, and then here would be three months, and let's just say here's another two months. Um, if a client wants to uh, lean out you clearly want them to experience some of each phase, so that way you're 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 helping to build their overall balance fitness in, in a balanced way. You know you don't want to make them used to only high reps, and then you come and you bring them here to to these reps. They're gonna burn out really quick and get exhausted because their body's not used to that. So you kind of want to <clears throat> mix them all in. So you can either mix it in in the workout and or between months and or weeks. So you can do two months of. Um, Muscle building, muscle building being the um, six to 12 rep range. Rest is gonna be 60 to 120 seconds. Mm -hmm. You can go three weeks of leaning out, the leaning out phase. So now they're gonna go into a little bit higher, higher reps, a little bit lower. And then you can either bring them back to muscle building or you can bring them back to strength. Um, that is a big jump from one to the other. Sometimes it's good, sometimes bad. It's all done on your programming. Um, you could do maybe like two weeks of, of muscle building, and then you can do another three weeks here of strength, and then repeat and or see how their body's been. If you're checking every two weeks, as far as their, their body fat percentage, you kind of see how the body's reacting to it. You can either stick to it and or continue with your programming and modify back to strength before going back out to the leaning out phase. So if they're pretty much trying to just 
lose weight, then you're considering this is the most important part right here, but you gotta work them up towards it, okay? Um, and like I said, this could be monthly, this could be yearly, this could be whatever it is, depending on what you're reaching for. If you're just looking to do strength, majority of your workout programming is gonna be strength, and if it's gonna be strength, then you're gonna get the client used to this, and they're gonna be here most of the time because they're maybe they wanna do some kind of um, event to where they have to do strongest man bench press. So they're gonna be more, this is what they're gonna to have to do as far as performance. So that's what's gonna be the bulk of their programming. If they wanna do triathlons and do these high intensity things, endurance, this is gonna be the bulk of their programming. You're still gonna to wanna to incorporate some of these so that way they're not weak in those aspects, you know? Um, you don't want them to all of a sudden, you know, they hurt their leg, you know, 20 miles in, six miles to go, but they gotta carry their own body. If they don't have the stress to, to drag their own body, you know, it's not gonna help them. So overall, the workout programming you want them to do. Even if they don't think it's important, it is gonna be important to, yeah, in case something happens, you wanna be prepared. So cycle periodization is how often you're gonna do this. Within this is when you can incorporate some of these things, basing, um, what you're looking to do and then the primal and the accent um these are more so as far as base as your primal movement is going to be things that are basic so you got your squat you got your pull up you got your push up these are all basic primal movements that we do okay with weight without weight you know we're pushing boxes we're pulling we're pulling certain things uh we're squatting we're sitting we're sitting in the chair we're sitting you know on the couch so there's a lot of movements here that are natural so it's primal movement exercise these are important the accent ones are the stabilizer muscles in the legs your ankle mobility those are kind of the accent muscles and target areas that you also have to consider kind of based on what i said over here with the muscles right the stabilizers kind of fall in under accent the, the primal movers are the protagonist and antagonist is more you know, yeah. the triceps, the legs, the bicep, kind of deal like that. Uh, accents are also sometimes considered the weak muscles because they're not always worked. They're not always worked out. Normally people want to work out the chest, the biceps, the quads. They ignore the hamstrings, you know, the, the back of your deltoid. All, all the important ones they can't see. They don't want to work them out. They can't see them. So make sure that you incorporate them into, into that workout program. <laughs> so primal, accent, um, you come in, you do your workout, and you don't always think of all these things. So in the grand scheme of things is, yeah, if you're planning out your full workout program, you know, why am I gonna do eight reps in this workout? Why am I supersetting? Is it leading me towards whatever my main goal is? Is it triathlon? Is it the bench? Is it leaning out, losing weight? What's the eventual goal? You know, which part of the program am I in? Am I in the muscle building phase, the lean out phase? In which case, if I'm in the lead out phase, then why am I doing heavy sets of one to five? So I'm keeping all that in mind with, going towards your goal unless you know specifically I've already passed lean out phase this is all part of my lean out program but right now I'm not in this I'm in the muscle building so that's why the rep range is there okay why are you super setting as part of the primal and accent movement most of the time you want to get the most difficult exercises out in the beginning of the workout because you get more tired as time goes on so if you're looking for leg strength then yeah clearly you want to do your squats at the beginning of the workout not at the end when you're tired because you're not going to be able to add as heavy weights so if you're looking at build size in your quads or your legs you want to do the squats in the beginning of the workout right as to start and get the heavier weights out and so forth if you you know you still focus is on legs but more so agility and balance is going to be your your goal for that week then you're going to want to start out with all of those exercises in the beginning okay if it's not going to be necessarily strength or size get those out in the beginning the single leg box jumps the lateral ski jumps with weights or whatever the case is get that out in the beginning because it's going to be a little bit more intricate with with detail with precision um, with balance and you don't want to be exhausted and then doing single leg movements laterally and or up on the things your legs will give out you get injured you sprained you, got, you know, you got your tendons, you got your, your knees, so many different things to hurt. Maybe get those out in the beginning. And if it's at the end of a workout and a burnout, then it's likely going to be some easier type movements, not difficult, not advanced, um, not something that's going to make you push uh, that hard. So 
think about all these things when you're doing your programming. Um, it's not just squatting or single leg RDLs. No, it's, it's everything should have a purpose and, and programming it. Any questions for me? Some good example of accent. Some good examples of an accent workout will be um, you start off with squats mm -hmm. and then you can do a uh, single leg, no weight RDLs afterwards um, to accent the, the leg workout. The bulk of this is going to be um, your quads here, depending on your depth. And then, yeah, if you go deep enough below that 90, you'll activate some glutes in your hams. So next after that, as soon as you're done with that, say you superset with a single leg RDL, no weight, just to kind of accent, kind of get a little fatigue into that, work that little muscle out a little bit more. Um, but this is the main mover, and then you're accenting it slightly. So it's like you're working it, but not not killing it. Um, another accent for um, if you're doing back day, you can do pull-ups for one. You can be doing your pull-ups and your accent, you can do scorpions. You lay down on the floor and you, and you do your low back more for, for mobility. You're accenting the little aspect of the back just for range of motion um, kind of deal. So things like that. Same thing for here, you can do leg overs as your accent. You're working the legs, but you're not killing the legs. So you can do leg overs over the foam roller or something like that. Get the stretch going. Okay? So that's how you can kind of like do your accent for whatever it is that you're doing. Um, barbell bench press, that's the main mover. Maybe some light dumbbell alternating hammer curls, working the lower part of that bicep as your, as your accent. Part of how the client's always working out together, but also is going to determine your uh, your cycle as well. Because if they're only doing two days a week or doing five days a week, all this is going to come in, into effect. If it's only two days a week, then you're probably going to have a little bit more volume um, on those workout days because that's all they're going to do for the week. As opposed to if you're doing five, then yeah, you can do 30 minutes for five days or an hour for five days. If you're only doing two, you maybe have to do 90 minute workouts each day to get everything in. Good. Uh, the more time you have to break it up into each of the days, then the more the more muscles you can hit. Because we got here, we have, as far as you know, the muscles, we got legs, back, chest, shoulder, triceps, biceps, and these are uh, the main muscle groups, and it did go from order from biggest to smallest, mm -hmm. intentionally. Normally you wanna have all the bulk of the exercise in the beginning be uh, the bigger muscles that need the most attention, and then if you're doing a, a compound movement, you can do throw in some of the other little ones to accent the, um, the main movers. So, Normally they do back and bys, they're both pulls. You're using biceps kind of like when you, when you pull yourself up for chin ups. So you kind of want that, that would be your accent kind of muscle as well to that. Or you can do, yeah, back and try, you know, so where's the opposite. So you switch it up, the more you switch it up, the more random you do it, the better for you. Don't always stick to the same one. Outside from that, you have your core and abs. What is the, I mean, I understand the difference, but how do you define the difference between core and Abs are lower, upper, lower, yeah. oblique exercises. Core is more of, um, I consider more of a mental, and you being able to hold your um, your body in a certain position, um, and you're aware of your body. So if you're aware that, you, you know, when you're holding that plank, knowing when your hips up, when you're sagging, uh, you're sagging your shoulders, or you're having down, you your head sagging, Keep being aware of all that and then maintaining that mental, you're going to be mentally strong. A lot of that's going to come from pulling your navel in and keeping all this tight. To pretty much just keep it locked in. You have to be fully aware as to where you're doing abs. It's more of a movement kind of contraction movement, left or right, up and down, leg raises, crunches. It's all going to be an active movement. To those, okay. this is going to be more static. Okay. This is more active. This is more static. So you go when you're doing the banana hold and you're face up, mm -hmm. you are feeling it in the lower abs because your legs are straightened out, but a lot of that's going to be mental as well. And you, for one, keeping your body stiff, don't yeah. let it be form, and then mentally fighting through that urge to want to put your legs down. You know, you're tired, you're fatigued, oh, you can't do it. So this is a lot more mental, static. I was going to say, it seems like core is kind of has an asterisk next to it. Like it's not technically a muscle group, it's more of a... It's more of your torso as a whole and mental. Yes. 
understanding exactly. of things. If, if that the stronger your core, not only are you aware of your body's positioning, but you also have a strong mental power and awareness of your body, and you can push through further. So when you can do that, you can improve in all these exercises tenfold. So the stronger your core is, the better these are gonna improve. You can do heavier weights for that squat because you're not going to let your back buckle. You're fully aware of that. And your core is strong to hold it there no matter what you're doing, okay? No matter if you're up, you're leaning over, you're on the floor, you should always keep your posture perfect. So the better that you can maintain that, the less injuries you're gonna have. So that's why the core is important, okay? These things do not get you abs. It doesn't make you see your six pack. Like I said, it's gonna improve your overall awareness of your body and your functional. Make sure that you're you're safe. What's gonna get you your abs is a combination of your workout program and your cardio. It's a completely different aspect, your cardio as well. And then your diet, because your diet's gonna make sure that both of these, the cardio and the weight training, kind of go in sync. Does abs fall under the category of muscle groups there? Yeah, yeah, they would. Would it fall at the bottom, I would imagine? Yeah, at the bottom. These heal a lot faster, so you can do these more days a week, two, mm -hmm. three, four, five. Some people do them every day, it depends on you. They heal a lot faster because they're constantly in use. All day we're working, and all day we should be activating if we're keeping good posture. It's those times that everybody wants to slouch in the computer doing this, or just hanging out, or just kind of just chilling, talking, crossing their hands like this as opposed to just resting into your spine. So we have, you should have your core activated all day. So it's gonna heal a lot faster. It's not gonna stay as sore as long as some of these that you kill in your workouts. So that's why it's normally, yeah, you can do back and abs, you know, shoulder and obliques, you know, uh, legs and core. Are there any that should be? I'm so sorry. Are there any that should definitely not go together on no. workout day? It doesn't matter. Any doesn't combination. Matter. Any combination. Acceptable. Okay. You said you know, you know, based on what your goal is. If your your goal is heavy squats, and that's going to be the front. If it's more agility training, still working out leg days, then all the complex movements are going to go in front, and and so forth. So you're going to determine no matter what combos you do, there's something in there that's going to be more important. You know, you're pushing for heavier weight on something, or you're trying to increase the size of something a little bit more. You're trying to shrink the size of something more. Focus on that and begin. Right. How does cardio work into all this? When I'm putting together a training program and I'm setting up somebody's week, even or even just their day, and I'm factoring in all these things here, how does cardio work into that? Cardio works into that. What cardio? Cardio goes in with the kind of like all these factors over here. Yeah. You know, cycle periodization, style, mode. Um, is where the cardio is going to kind of go into. Cardio is going to go in. It's important because the cardio is um, the strength training itself. Doing the weights is going to help you do to build all the muscles around that protect your joints, your ligaments, your tendons, uh, your spinal cord. It's going to protect. It's also going to make you strong to have better balance and control of your limbs. Um, building your muscle, pretty much everything, the muscular structure that protects you. Um, is where the strength training comes into play. It also helps you to be there faster in agility, uh, reflexes, all these things. Cardio doesn't necessarily do that. Cardio is actually going to improve your respiratory system, your endurance, your breathing, your oxygen, uh, regeneration capabilities. All that's going to kind of like be in here. This will help you burn, you know, certain aspects of your fats, your sugars, um, even muscle, depending on how you do it. So. That's what this does. This is not going to make you stronger. You know, it's not going to make you have the ability to drag your body a mile down the road if you hurt your legs. You're going to be pretty much shot if you can't even, you know, control your own body weight. So this lung capacity, oxygen, all that stuff, um, which is good for blood circulation and, and, and all the internal aspects like that in that aspect of the body. Um, so that, that's why they're different. You're going to want to use this based on yeah what the goal is depending on what the goal is you're gonna have to set up another uh, cycle or periodization for for that that client's goals if it's just fat burning or trying for uh, um, a marathon in which case then you gotta you gotta start doing this as far as terms in mileage you know 
first week we'll do six miles, second week we'll do eight miles and so forth, and then you kind of build up to where if you're not trying to do that and you're just trying to build up their cardio endurance so that way they can do a little bit better in their you know, training program or recovery, the faster they recover, the faster they can go, a lot less breaks. Um, the better for the programming, you want to do more circuit training here for, for the workouts and you know on the off days or at the end of the workout, your body once it's depleted, it's carb glycogen stores during your workout, all that's left is for your body to switch over to fat burning mode. So if you throw it in at the end of the workout, your body's going to burn a little bit more of your fat to do it. You don't have to go super hard and crazy because you've already fatigued and burned out during your workout. You can do it at the end of your workout. Okay? So that's how you would kind of like incorporate that into whatever you're doing. A lot of people want to do cardio four or five days a week for an hour. So take that into consideration and also make sure that they're eating right. All this goes on with, with diet. But as far as the training and programming aspect, now you're considering the cardio as well as the workout program with it. So for someone who wants to lose weight, yeah, I'd recommend two or three days at least, you know, 30 minutes cardio. It doesn't always have to be 30. You can either just tell them to do 30 or you can program it. You do 20 one day, 15 another, you know, 30 one day. Um, that should be enough. If your programming is going good, you won't need as much cardio, but you definitely need the cardio to help improve their recovery time and their endurance and not burn out of fatigue, and then they have to take a longer break than it's supposed to. Well, it's supposed to take 90 seconds, and why are you taking five minutes to recover? So you build on that from week to week. As you see the effects on the client, you adjust the programming for the following week. Okay. Okay. You should also always be prepared to modify this on a moment's notice. Okay. It happens all the time. You know, you can either pre-plan your weeks and your workouts, and if that's what you're stuck to, to doing, and right, this is what I'm gonna do, and it's planned, this is it. It's gonna throw you off when the client comes in and they slipped outside and they hurt their knee. They still wanna do a workout, but now you have to modify. Now you gotta do an upper body day, or you may have to do an ab day. Um, they strain their back when they come in. You know, it's like I strain my back getting out of my car. You know, can we do some rehab exercise? And then you gotta modify your training program for that day or that week, because you might only see them once a week, you might even see them two or three times a week. So if one day is shot off of your program, you're gonna have to modify that day, not be too like, damn. You gotta modify it to address that situation. And then the next two days or the next day, how you're gonna tweak that to still get them going with their with their goals. And then are you gonna give them workouts too on, on the off days as well to kind of help you towards your goals. So you're gonna assess whether you need to do more work as far as giving them programs outside of what you're doing, if you know they can only afford two days a week or one day a week, are you gonna give them enough knowledge to help them get going on their own so that way it goes inside what you're doing with that one day a week, okay? Keep all that, don't feel stuck to, well, we're doing strength or that's gonna be strength. No, something happens, I'm gonna need to modify. You see they're struggling a lot, they're not getting it. Switch up the program to something a little bit easier to build up their confidence. Still keep it in mind, maybe you just kind of just swapping two different two different uh, you know the, the timings. Maybe you're just gonna swap it because it's a little bit too much for them. But after about um, if this was only one month, and then you're trying to switch them out to um, to muscle building, maybe it should have been a little bit longer with the leaning out kind of exercise. So just modify it as you go and take it in ease. And it's a learning process between you and the client that you're getting to learn them and push them through their mental barriers to, to get them towards their goals. There's gonna be mishaps and missteps in the workout program. There's gonna be mishaps with the cardio, as well as with the diet. And as soon as all of them kind of like flow a little bit better, they're gonna see a lot more results.